CBS Miami had a conversation with Ronald Popo, and that is the victim of the Miami cannibal who literally chewed his face off. This is a pretty incredible interview, in my opinion, because it kind of gives you insight into who Ronald Popo is and just how kind and gentle he is, regardless of what has happened to him in the past. So let's listen to the first video where he talks about that horrible day. He attacked me. He just ripped me to ribbons. He chewed at my face. He plucked out my eyes. Basically, that, that's all there is to say about him. That is the voice of Ronald Popo, victim of the so-called Causeway cannibal, Rudy Eugene. For the first time, we are hearing Papo describe the vicious attack that occurred on the MacArthur Causeway Memorial Day weekend. God, it's amazing, man. And how do you not hold on to tremendous anger after that? Yeah, that's what I was surprised about, right? I was expecting some emotion. But he, when he was speaking, he's very matter-of-fact about that day, and he seems as if, you know, he's dealing with it as if he's like a superhuman, you know? Um, and also, another interesting uh, aspect of this that no one knew about before was that he had approached Ronald Popo and said something about how he wasn't getting lucky at the beach that day. Hmm. And he was upset that he wasn't getting lucky at the beach, and then he started accusing Popo of stealing his Bible. Hmm. Now remember, uh, and this, no one really talks about this, there were like page, ripped out pages of the Bible uh, leading up to Ronald Popo. You know, that's really interesting. I hadn't thought of it that way, mm -hmm. but that's a good point by Anna because that's inconvenient for folks because the Bible is sacred and you don't want to blame anything on that. Right. So we had heard about how, how he's Haitian and voodoo, but not the Bible. Mm -hmm. Basalts, but not the Bible, mm -hmm. right? Now look, you can't really blame the Bible because this is an act of a lunatic, obviously. He somehow lost his mind for whatever reason, right? But it's funny how that gets no play at all in the press. None, none. Uh, all right, let's listen to the next video. But before he attacked you, we have any uh, clothes, any materials, any books no. or anything in his hand? I don't really recall him having anything. The interview reveals that Papa was confused about some details. He thought Rudy Eugene, for instance, had hitchhiked across the causeway when we know he walked. And although the attack left Papo blind in both eyes and undergoing occupational therapy to deal with the new realities of his life, Papo seems relatively resigned to what happened to him. Amazing. And God bless his heart, man. I mean, to not come out of that experience incredibly bitter, I, I don't think I could have done it. I, you know, the, whether it's your face being incredibly mangled, but you can't even see. You know, it's, you know, obviously our heart goes out to him and uh, whatever it was, that that guy was on. Uh, I hope nobody else is on it. You know, I'm going to do kind of an awkward comparison here, but of course the story went national and people started donating money to him. And he received a little over $100,000 uh, so, you know, he can pay for the surgeries and all that stuff. And, you know, uh, the government is also helping him pay for the surgery, so that's a good thing. Um, but then I kind of compared it to the woman who was bullied on the bus. I knew and you she, were going there, yeah. And she received $700,000. It's kind of interesting to see how much more money she got compared to him. Yeah, it is fascinating. I guess that people saw her taking that kind of emotional abuse and felt a, a stronger connection to her because... None of us have gotten our face bitten off. Right, that's but true. But we've, a lot of us have been bullied, and I think that that's what led to that connection that led to so much money for the other woman. But my God, in terms of what's worse, this is a million times worse.